Good evening. Welcome to the Northfield Church of Christ July 26th evening services. This evening we will sing a few songs together, have a couple of prayers, and I will deliver a lesson to you that is entitled Do Good. And so if you would, uh, if you would open your songbook, which I hope you have with you, to number 52. All right, open your songbook to number 52. You ready? Father and friend, thy light, thy love, beaming through all thy works we glory kills the hand above, and all the earth is full of thee. Thy voice we hear, thy presence feel, while thou do children shall not faint nor fear, sustained by this delightful thought, since thou their God art Turn to number 77. Number 77. And 
adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Before our opening prayer, if you will turn to number 68. 68. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus Christ is one. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. The poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that uh, you are our God and we are your people. We are just in awe of your greatness. We're in awe of your love for us that while we were yet sinners, you sent Jesus to us. We thank you so much, dear God, and we give you praise. Uh, we thank you so much that uh, you bring comfort to our lives and even through hardship, we always have that light ahead of us that is you and your son. Pray that you'll be with us this evening as we worship you. We sing a few songs of praise as we uh, just get into your word for a few minutes to try to get a lesson across. I pray that you would continue to bless us, continue to be with us, uh, be with all those that are on our sick and hurting list. Be with Elsie's brother as he goes into surgery. Be with Elizabeth as she awaits testing. Be with Linda's uh, sister uh, as she is continuing to undergo testing. Uh, we offer these prayers on behalf of these folks because they know that uh, you listen to our prayers. Be with us this evening, I pray this in Jesus' most holy name, amen. And if you would turn to number 76. 76. After this song, we will have the lesson. We will sing all four verses and then sing the chorus at the end. 76. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. 
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. When through the woods, the forest glades, I wander. And hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then when I think that God is son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, My Savior God to Thee, How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me, how great thou art, how great thou art. This evening, I would like to speak with you for just a few moments about a subject that should be near and dear uh, to all of us. The text of the lesson will be Galatians, Galatians, I'll get it out, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. And so if you have your Bibles with you, if you would turn to Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. The words are very succinct. The the words are very, very clear. I think they make their point to us. They say this, So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those that are of the household of faith. Now, in another book, Paul wrote to Timothy in Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, to give definition to whom those people uh, who the household of faith actually are. And what he says is that uh, the household of God, which is the church of the living God. And so the household of God is the church of the living God. And so, with that being said, um, I told you already, my lesson this evening will be about doing good. Now, I would propose to you that this is what we might call a generic command. All right, Mark, what do you mean by that? What's a generic command? Well, a a generic command command is this. God tells us what to do. He says, do good. But he doesn't tell us specifically what we are supposed to do. All right, does that all make sense? I hope so. Now, with that in mind, we are in extraordinary times in the world right now. 
we will look back at this uh, years to come and wonder about the year 2020 when we had the great coronavirus pandemic. And so uh, it might be right for all of us to ask an answer as far as doing good is concerned. If I'm basically quarantined in my home, if I only go out to get some of the necessities of life, how can I do good for people? Hmm. Uh, there are some people that are just returning to work. There are people that uh, had a rather hard time providing for their family. What are some ways that you and I could help? Well, you know what? I can think of a myriad of them. And as a matter of fact, I challenge you this evening to, to think of some yourself. For example, how about if you know someone who can't meet their physical needs? Well, perhaps you have uh, the means with which to meet your needs and the ability to help others meet their needs. It would not be remiss for you to help them out. Don't blow the bugles. Don't beat the drums. Just help them. I know a member of our church who knew that uh, one of our women uh, was in need. And, and he just delivered three or four bags of groceries to the step of her house. Uh, he left, and when she came out, all of these things were there. No fanfare, just doing good. How about a phone call? You know what? Quarantining doesn't keep us from making phone calls. How about sending an email? If uh, we know people that are email literate, we can email them. And in today's uh, 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 world, we can text them, and we can even reach them on social media. During this quarantine, there are still ways that we can do good. We aren't cooped up to the extent that we cannot go about doing good. We may not be able to rumble around and go to people's houses, but there are good things that we can continue to do. Now, interestingly enough, and, and, and I think this is important, there's nobody in this world, save God, that is big enough to help everybody. But we can help some. We can help some within the sphere of our lives. And you know what? In Galatians 6, verse 10, when the Apostle Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes, let us do good to all people, he's sending out the clarion call to each one of us. As a matter of fact, since these are Spirit-inspired words, I think that this is what God really expects of us. He says, while we have opportunity, nobody's going to knock on the door and say, knock, 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 knock. Okay, here's the opportunity. Sometimes we have to find opportunities. We need to walk into life with, without blinders on and realize that there are people out there that can use our encouragement, that can use the abundance that we have. You know what? There are folks out there that during this pandemic that have, have worked all through it. There are the people who have worked in the stores that, uh, that we uh, find the necessities of life. There are those wonderful workers that work in the hospitals, the doctors and the nurses. 
those people that are attending to folks with the coronavirus. We have examples set for us. Well, if those people are out there doing that, wouldn't it behoove us as Christians to listen to the admonition of God when he says, when we have opportunity, let us do good. Now, again, let's clarify the scripture. The apostle Paul says, let us do good to all people. And I've already stated, and I think we understand it, we can't do good to, for all the people of the world. However, he narrows the spear just a little bit when he speaks says, especially to those of the household of faith. In Acts chapter 4, verse 37, we have that wonderful man, this cohort of the apostle Paul named Barnabas. And he was known in the early church as an encourager. As a matter of fact, they called him the son of encouragement. And you know, there are people within our church framework that we can encourage for whatever they might need. We can't wrap ourselves up in the quarantine. We can't allow it to be a huge pity party for ourselves. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in that pity party that we forget there are other people out there that have needs. And even though they may be embarrassed to ask, before they ask, let's just go out and try to help. Try to help in any way that we possibly can. Thirdly, we can take any opportunity that we have to, within certain frameworks, meet together. You and I are meeting virtually. You have uh, gotten on your computer, gotten on your phone. You have gone to YouTube, and you have found this at Northville Church of Christ NJ. And you've taken the time. You've taken about 25 or 30 minutes out of your life to sing a few songs, to praise our God, and to listen to a few words from your inspired scriptures. We can do that. We have other means. On Wednesday evening, our, our brother Steve Robertson is still teaching his Wednesday night Bible class. He's not doing it at our building. He's doing it via a social media phenomena that is called Zoom, Z-O-O-M, just the way it sounds. And if you want, he can send you the link to that Zoom. On Wednesday nights, uh, I think last Wednesday night, there were close to 10 of us. Uh, our pictures are framed up around. Steve is teaching. We all get the opportunity to participate. These are ways that we can build one another up and encourage one another. You know, in, in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, there are two wonderful verses in there. Verses 24 and 25. 25 tells us that we should continue to meet together. Howbeit in this time, maybe it's meeting together virtually. I know that we are meeting in our building right now. This is the third Sunday. This morning we met. It is being live streamed. You can pick it up on YouTube at any time. And we have this Sunday evening service. Why do we do this? Well, because of the pandemic, we don't want to go onto an island all by ourselves. We want to continue to do your work. We want to continue to be involved in your work. And so with that, we have verse 24. And verse 24 says, let us, let us take the time to encourage one another toward love and good deeds. Now, we can do that when we gather together, whether it is physically gathering together 
or whether it is as through this media, whether it's virtually gathering together. Now, I know in our building, they have sectioned and cordoned off the building so that we can socially distance. They have, uh, they have required masks to be worn when we get close to one another. And it has been proven we can help alter the spread of this terrible virus by keeping whatever we have inside. We can protect others and even protect ourselves. But what we do every time we meet together, whether virtually or in person, is we get the opportunity to praise God. I hope you felt better when you sang songs this evening. I help, hope you felt better when you listened to a prayer. And I hope you will go away with this thinking, hmm, I need to think of some ways, as Mark has, has enumerated this evening, that I can do good for those around me. Because it's biblical. Paul, through the Holy Spirit, said, while we have opportunity do good to all people and especially to the household of faith. And he furthermore says to Timothy that that household of faith is our church. And the Hebrew writer says, let us encourage one another toward love and good deeds, forsaking not the assembling together. I know that all of these meetings are doing good for all of us that desire to get involved. Just because there's a quarantine, just because we are in these extraordinary times, doesn't mean and doesn't void the command that is given to us to do good to all people, especially to those of the household of faith. Let's quit looking inward. Let's quit looking at this as poor me, I'm quarantined. And let's look outward. Let's look out to those people whose needs we might be able to meet. And that is the essence of what God means, I believe, and I hope you do too, that while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. The message this evening was simple and to the point, but I hope that it struck us. I hope that it struck to the heart of what we are supposed to be about as Christians, doing good to people about us. I hope that this lesson uh, rang true to you uh, this evening. I pray that uh, we will all give thought to doing good. Let's close this service with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the chance that we had to meet together again this evening. I pray that this very, very simple message was one in which uh, we actually, our, our hearts were touched just a little bit. They were touched to the point where we will give thought to how we can do good for others. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to always be about your business. Help us to be proud of being Christians and that in being proud of being Christians, we will want to uh, uplift one another as we are uplifted by those around us. Be with us through the evening. Help us to look forward to when we can meet again. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I pray that all of you will be safe, and God bless you all. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land, glory land way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way.